Tenure note yields remain on those dreary, stubborn lows as demand and buyers continue to come out anytime there's a rise in yields, but we still remain trapped in that range. We're unable to break below 205, which ultimately would lead us to, to talk about that 2% level, which would ultimately talk about us retracing that November 2016 election launch level about 185 tenure note yield. So uh, I think at this point, uh, there's not necessarily going to be a, a waiting game here as much as it is we're looking for some, some catalysts that will push the bond market uh, to new price highs, new yield lows that we haven't seen uh, going back several years. And, and I like the fact that the, every time we see bonds sell off, which we did a few times this week, there's quickly they were quickly bought up. We had very positive, strong auctions this week despite yields being so low. And I think, and demand was even strong at these low yields and higher prices. So I don't, I don't think necessarily that we're going to see any kind of breakdown in the bond market just yet. It's had a pretty good run if you go back to March FOMC, and it doesn't seem to be losing any momentum, despite the fact that we do have those days where we have, uh, we do have some modest sell-offs and rises in yield. Uh, if you look at market volatility in the Treasury space, we had talked about it going down as the market sort of got comfortable in this range. And oh, lo and behold, heading into the weekend, after all that's happened this week, uh, we did start to see volatility bid up again. Very elevated, but it is it's certainly uh, warranted uh, with all the uncertainty now that you're throwing in geopolitical events in the Middle East and you've still got issues with China and you've got, you know, economy that's that's hot and cold. Uh, we're not getting a whole lot of uh, steady numbers out of the economy. And yes, we do have the Federal Reserve meeting for the June FOMC meeting next week. And that will be the highlight. Several central banks are meeting uh, next week, but ultimately the Fed will take center stage. And will the Fed cut is kind of the big question. And the Fed is likely going to have to cut. Remember, Fed raises rates when they want to, but cuts them when they have to, but not yet. They don't have to cut yet. And the market expectations are pretty tepid for a great cut at the June meeting next week. And I think it'll probably be a time for the Fed to talk about cutting rates, uh, to kind of tee up what they really want to do or ultimately what they're going to have to do. And that's cut rates in July. It's just a matter of how aggressive will they be cutting rates in July. Some expecting a 50 basis point cut, others only 25. And I think that at this point it's unclear, but we could get some clarity from the Fed uh, next week when they talk, when they have the, the press conference. Likewise, we will get the semi-annual testimony to Congress in July, prior to the July FOMC meeting, which will also give Fed Chair Powell a, a chance to kind of clarify where the Fed aims uh, to target rates in the future. Because right now we're looking at 75 basis points of cuts priced into this calendar year. And I don't see that number going down. I actually see that those odds going up, possibly even to more cuts, depending on how the economy performs and whether we get through this, these trade issues and the ripple effects that they have on the global economy. So heading into the weekend, bonds remain very strong, but unable to break out of that range. But next week with June FOMC, all bets are off that things are going to stay the way they are right now.